Okay, so today we have this little Electra cruisery bike from a decade or two ago. Um, so fairly modern. It's uh, my friend Lila's. She's the park lady at the dog park I go to all the time. So I hang out with her all the time. She's super cool. Um, and it's got a flat front tire and needs a dust off real bad and maybe a mild tune up. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. Of course, the seat is almost always slammed. It's got about a quarter of it showing. I don't think it's sized super well for her. So I'm not going to really worry about marking it with a Sharpie or whatever, but normally I would. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room so I can get this thing in the bike stand. Ah. All right. First thing I'm going to do is let's give it a little look-see. I don't think she actually rides it that much. So we talked about this flat tire for months. Yeah, chain's not worn at all. She said she had a, a shop lube the chain last time she rode it, which was probably two or three years ago. Hyperglide, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight speed cassette, disc brakes that look like they're old just BB7s or some knockoff of BB7s. Definitely gonna lube the cable, it's a little draggy. This one, it's a lot more lever travel. And check. See, the headset's got me played. I'm grabbing the fork and grabbing the stem and trying to see if I can get it to wiggle side to side or back to forth. It doesn't. Check the cranks. Got the kickstand here. Oh. Yeah, no play. Cool, cool. The first thing I guess I'll do is just give it a gentle dust off. Not very exciting for videos, but skip through most of it. Just to make it look a little prettier. After I dust it off, I might spray it down with some degreaser and give it a little wipe off too. So I just gave it a little dust off. I'm gonna fix this flat, maybe do a little more cleaning while I go. A lot of people don't really like bike cleaning, and it's probably really boring to watch, but um, if you do tune up on someone's bike and you don't dust it off or do any cleaning, you didn't do it too enough. But it's not what customers see or feel or understand. All they see or feel is the cleaning. There's a lot of modern bikes with sealed cartridge everything and unadjustable everything. But basically a tune up is just cleaning it, and maybe lubing the cables, cleaning the chain, twisting a barrel adjuster a little bit and you're charging them, you know, 60, 70, 80, 120 dollars, you better clean that bike. That is all they see or care about. You could probably detune it, make it ride worse, and when they drop it off they wouldn't even notice or care as long as it was clean and the chain was lubed. A lot of bike customers, especially with fancy race bikes, don't know anything about bikes at all. And because of that they obsess with chain grease and chain lube and dry lubes and just weird stuff. Sometimes they're obsessed with tires. So you just have to... And I mean, obsessed with these things are like the least relevant or important things ever. So sometimes you just have to give them what they want. And then also try and actually make it better. Which they don't really care about. Now these are the same guys who buy like super overpriced blingy parts that break immediately and they're happy about it because it makes them feel like they're serious riders and really hardcore cyclists if they're breaking expensive parts. Like, oh, I'm so strong, I make so many watts. And you're like, what? Funny conversation to have while working on a crappy old cruiser. <laughs> okay, let's fix this tire. So the, the valves here, the logo is off-centered by about a handful. I like to pay attention to where that is. I want to figure out what caused the flat. Find it in the tube. Find it in the tire. Make sure it's actually fixed. You know, just throw the tube in and it immediately goes flat again. Which is like one of the two main questions on every like home mechanic bike forum is I fixed my flat, I put a new tube in and it went flat again right away. Like what could be going on? It's blah blah blah. It's everything in the world's fault except for whatever sharp thing caused the flat in the first place. The second most question is, I put a new chain on, my bike skips, what could it be? You're like, oh, your cassette is worn out too. Like, people are like, no, that can't be it. 
every other post on every forum are those two things. It's hilarious. I read a post once in a while. Dang, Fat Frank. I don't hear anything. My least favorite kind of flat is a mystery flat where you can't actually hear or feel the leak. Could it be the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little thorn puncturing through? Could it be a very slightly bad valve with barely leaking at all? Could it be um, that she hasn't pumped the tire up in years and it just went completely flat? These tires just lose a pound or two every every week or so, no matter what. Oh, I hear it. Oh, I feel it in my ear. Your lips are extra sensitive, so you can feel it in your lips. And here it is, it looks like. You can see all this little peck, 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 pecking. So maybe there's something sharp and ridden low or pushed around low so it's moved and everything bunched up and moved. It looks like it stabbed it a whole bunch of times. In the sidewall, which is extra ungood. And if you see, it's almost halfway around from the tube. A little farther than half, I think, if we go the other way. So here's the tube. I'm going to say it's right over here somewhere. Pull this tire all the way out and really scope it out. And on the other side. hints as to what caused it and where it's from. If it was two little holes right next to each other, two little slits, we call those snake bites, and that's from riding with the tire and tube too low, and it wiggling and moving and getting pinched between the edge of the tire and the rim. It can also happen when you're trying to pump a tire up. Because we're going to have the tube in there right. Well, I'm not seeing or feeling anything. Maybe it's a problem in the rim. Or maybe it's just in here and it's something really, really tiny and annoying. So I'm really rubbing my fingers around. A lot of guys will use old, like, uh, women's stockings, like nylons, you can put over your hand. Make like a little mesh net to rub in there. Really try and feel anything sharp. Sometimes this old plastic rim tape will get hard with the years. Instead of being flat, it'll start curling up and making little hard, sharp edges and they'll vibrate and hack into tubes if they're uh, if they're old and get all razor sharp and if the tube is being ridden on way too low, which most people do. I'm feeling along the lips, trying to find anything sharp. The seam. Yeah, the seam over here is definitely a little sharp. Probably not a real problem, but I might put a little piece of tape over that anyways. Oh, I hate it when I can't find some obvious little spike or tack or wire. People drive on bald car tires all the time, and you can see the wire belts that are showing up. Those little break-offs, so you get little zillions of little pieces of wire in the street. That's what usually causes flats. Sometimes little pieces of glass, that's usually when really hard tires are like stick in there and they roll over them over and over and over again, hammering them on. They're like, oh, this hard puncture-proof tire is going to be great for flats. And you're like, not really. It just holds glass there until it can eventually hammer through. I'm just going to take a little teeny bit of sandpaper and just hit this rough edge and see if that makes it any better. I'm not really trying to sand all over the paint or anything, just seeing if I can get rid of these little burrs and roughness, which may or may not cause those flats. Just right at the seam. You can see it's a little shiny and silver now. It's nice and smooth now. The other side too. I'm 
I hate these things. It's going to slip around. It's going to bunch up. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that thing, solve all of our problems. This rubber ribbon liner's Revenge bike is far superior. It's just probably less inexpensive or something. They probably cost 30 cents, or those cost 5 cents. Go around, make sure it's covering all the spoke holes, make sure it's nice and soft. Make sure it seems like it's fitting great. And it is. <coughs> Out of total paranoia, I'm going to check this like three times. And check this guy out again. Disky side. Shrubby logos on both sides. Lining her up with the valve hole. Because that's what good people do. This is more pro. And it does make it easier to search the tire for sharp things. Once you find the hole in the tube. You go, oh, it's exactly, you know, 3 o'clock. Or 9 o'clock or whatever. Okay, we got a new tube. I'm gonna box these bell tubes for free from somewhere. I looked to see if I had a used tube. I have a lot of used 26s, but most of them are a couple of sizes too small. Going one size smaller is pretty alright. Going two or three is often a thing. You go too small, the tubes just don't hold air right, and they're always going low a lot faster than you want. But like I say, you can use 26 tubes for 650B. And that was my problem with them. They're ultralight tubes, the same thing. They're just, you, know, you gotta pump them up like every three days instead of like every week or two. Just annoying. The tubes you always put a little bit of air in them. Not too much, just don't want them to be flat so they don't get pinched as easy. So just enough to make them a little bit round all the way around. It's funny, this tube is labeled much bigger than the other ones I have, but it doesn't seem to be. Peel the top back, fish the valve stem in, peel the tire back over the tube, and then tuck the tire up and in. So you gotta tuck a little bit as you go, otherwise it's not going all the way up and in and it's just sort of barely sitting in there and you end up with a big loop at the end, which is not what we want. Especially when tucked by the valve. The valve stem makes everything tight. The valve popped all the way out because this tire is so fat. I'm going to tuck the other side in, this open side all the way in. It's a little tricky with the big fat tires because they are so loosey goosey and floating around. Little skinny tires is tricky because they are so tight and impossible to do. Okay, everything's in. Lots of air in the tube, so you know the tube's up in the tire, not pinched anywhere. Usually I go back and peel the sides around and look all the way around. I can really tell on this very fat, very loose setup. Huge tires want weird pressures. And as I pressure pump it up, I'm going around and looking all the way around the rim, making sure it's not popping out anywhere unseated. says 22 psi minimum, which is just crazy. So that looks and feels pretty good. Well, it's all apart. I'm gonna blast this rim in the fork a little bit. Some gross, drippy, ugly mucks. Scrub in the really bad spots. It's the really obvious spots. Beautiful. I'm gonna pop this dude in. It's got a disc, so we have to make sure we line up the disc. Quick release open, line up the disc inside this disc brake caliper. And boy, yeah, this fork's not exactly what you call perfectly aligned. So we gotta get it in here, we might have to futz with it and do this two or three times to really make sure that rotor is going right up where it's supposed to be. Right in between the caliper just right. My bike that's this finicky and weird will probably have to play with those caliper bolts. You hear it? It was rubbing a little bit, but barely. Mostly on this outside. Inside. 
where it needs a little bit of adjustment. A lot of gap in there. You can hold up a white card behind you or a light so you can see that gap. And it's cheap finicky stuff so you can hear it hit just a little teeny bit. There's not a lot I can do with that unless you want to really play with that rotor. Try and line it and do a bunch of nutty stuff. Which is super fun on high quality stuff, that's a lie. It's Big old drag. You can barely hear it dragging. It's not hitting one spot. Then sound it's gonna squeal, but you never know. This one's the same way. I might tighten it up just a little bit. Probably overdo it. Probably make it too good in the stands and it'll suck on the road. I'll wipe down the chain a little bit. So I'm just wiping off. Any excess dirt that's stuck to the old lube from last time it was lubed. I scraped the pulleys with a screwdriver. Because why wouldn't you? All that sticky dust and gunk off. I'm going to pinch them with this rag and scrape them too. There's a bunch of gunk on the freewheel. I said I'd clean it. It's really bad. I'll take it off or clean it or spray it or whatever. But I'm just barely getting some dust off because so it's barely going to lube it. And it's mostly totally fine. Got a little tri flow. I hold the tri flow, look at my hand against the bike. I'm trying to drop like a half of a drop on each one of these links. A lot of bike mechanics will just barely let the tri flow leak, touching the chain, spinning the chain. Then you spin it backwards for a while and let it get in, let it get you know, on the cassette a little bit. And that little bit on the cassette will get on the spots you missed. I drop in just a little drop under these pulleys. I'll often drop a little drop on any pivots on the derailleur. Just make things move smoothly. Coming and do the other side if you can get under that pulley. Yes, you don't want it all over the chain, all over the outside, sticking dust and road grime and making a mess, but you can get a little where it can work its way under. That is great. I'm also going to lube these cables and housing. The best way to do that is to shift the derailleur with your hand into the, into the easiest gear, the biggest cog. It makes a whole bunch of slack. Now we can just pop the cables and housing out. I usually just do two or three drops anymore and that's going to drain out the other side and get all over stuff you don't want to get over. Let that sit for a minute. Maybe one drop from this side just for fun. It's especially important if you're on the shifter. Everything gets gummy and sticky in these long housing runs. Old grease dries, old lube dries, water and muck get in. One more. Good measure. Slide that back up. The brakes would be a lot easier to do with the wheels out. They feel finish. You can also remove the tension on the barrel adjuster and turn the barrel adjusters all the way in. As much in as you can. Line up the slots, pull the cable tight, and then I'm going to pull the housing as I release that, and it pops right out. drops. Wait for it to sort of sink in. Make sure it's not just running down the outside. Sinking in. Do the other side. That's solid run all the way down. That is solid run all the way down. So the derailleur has housing going all the way down inside the frame all the way down to here. So the housing is like five feet long, so I'm not going to feel bad about giving this trailer a few extra shots. So that's a six or seven, it's probably way too much already, but a lot of housing. Pop it back in that braze on, got that slack, and so let the trailer go, slack is gone. 
do some backpedaling still. I want to do a 30 seconds or a minute of this to really let that lube work down inside the pivots of the chain. You do not want lube on the outside of the chain. It's a myth. That attracts dirt and grime. Dirt and grime is liquid sandpaper. It'll just wear out all your teeth and cogs. You just want to get down inside those pivots and wipe off the outside. And might as well go ahead and check the shifting where we're at it. One click, to move it up one gear in the back. Oh. And we've only got three or four clicks. That's the cable, pull on it manually with your hand, still does what it's supposed to do. So these old Shimano shifters, the grease likes to dry up and make little paws and springs not move, sort of frozen place and stuck in grease. So really the right thing to do is to pull them apart and clean them, but you really don't need to. That's usually more advanced for most people anyways. So really what I'm gonna do is dump a bunch of grease in there. If you like the cable hole, sometimes you can spray it in around stuff. Silicone spray lubricant. I usually like to use the T9 BioShield, this comes in a spray as well. It's supposed to be like the same chemical formula as the Shimano grease. But it seems like any spray lubricant really works. I'm going to try and find any creaks or crevices I can spray this stuff in. Just spray it underneath the little dust shield. The smart way to do it is to pull off this little dust boot where the cable goes in, so you can spray it in there. But it's a real pain in the ass in these shifters and the brake lever nuts in the way, the grips are in the way. So we're going to Try shifting it and seeing if that's made any difference yet. Oh, we got two gears, three gears, four gears. And just like that, all the gears are back. It just needs to soften up that old Shimano lube just a little teeny bit. Let all the little falls and springs and shifting mechanism stuff work. Booty full. The downside to this is that the grease will sometimes dry out again right away. Um, so you really need to ride the bike and shift a lot and really work this new lube into the grease. I definitely have bikes where I did this. They got them working when they sat around for two or three weeks till they sold, they didn't work again. Had to spray them and you gotta shift, you gotta shift. So you find out fronts being frozen a lot more often than rears because people never shift the fronts. Fish this stuff all back up and through. Come on, Barbara. So close. Ah, there we go. Throw all the barrel adjuster about out to where it was. Pull the guy back in about to where it was. Just getting it close. We'll probably go test ride the bike and then do some final barrel adjuster turns and whatnot to make the levers feel as even as possible while the brakes work as good as possible. Ah. Definitely gotta pump this rear tire up. And I definitely want to scrub the frame a little bit more, which is boring. A few shots. You can get all these lube drips off, and make sure that's not a thing. You really don't want to leave a bunch of extra grease sitting around all over bikes uh, for the customer to find on their nice clean pants or get all their hand on a ride. It makes them unhappy. Pop her down on the ground, put the kickstand up, make it a little easier to pump up this tire. Put the other one at 30, I'll put this one at 30, I'll ride it, decide that's way too low or way too high. Super exciting! I changed the rim line or two, they have a...
My garage is so... Well, hi. Are we videoing you? Yeah. Here, try that. I put it a little bit higher. That sucks a little bit lower in the end.